Hey guys, welcome to AWP. I am Pastor Ross and I'm excited to be before you all with another video of encouragement. So um, today we're going to do things a little bit differently. I usually operate in between the different offices. You know, God calls them to be apostles, prophets, pastors, um, you know, evangelists and teachers. And I usually go in between from teacher to pastor to prophet to apostolic. Um, the only one that I don't do is evangelism. So um, so today I'm putting on my, my prophetic hat. Usually I have on my pastoral hat um, as God has you know, called me to that office of a pastor, which has taken some time, some years of development, um, saying yes to God, because we don't have to say yes to the call. Um, so I have been really just trusting God in that process. And I want you guys to keep me in your prayers um, as I take on this role. Um, so of course, as I do the video, there's always noise in the background. But uh, let me start with some prayer and then we'll get started with the word. So Father God, I thank you for allowing me to get on right now, God, to do this word, God. I thank you for your love, your grace, God. Bless this live, God. Bless those who will come on after. And in your mighty name, Jesus, I say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. So I'm pretty excited about this video because today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about just the level of warfare and the intensity of these high power ranking spirits, demonic spirits that are festering um, in the atmosphere. And the Lord revealed to me because I have been dealing with um certain spirits kind of trailing me they've been they've been kind of um you know tailing me they've been um attacking they've been very pesky and um i asked the lord you know, what is this about what's going on here and at first i thought maybe it was something you know on me or something that i was you know doing or did i do something wrong and um after years of dealing with spiritual warfare with the prophetic the spiritual realm i know when to go to god how to seek god and just to ask him to just reveal to me what's going on and he revealed to me you know chris the higher a leader goes the higher the 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 warfare and the spiritual ranking of these demonic spirits it increases um and I just wanted to get on just to touch base for those of you who are in leadership and even those of you who are not and maybe you plan to or you just want to have the information on this um and how to pray against it um please take notes um so some of the spirits that have been festering and that have been on a rampage this season are the spirit of lust you know the spirit of control um the spirit of i want to say um i have it here the spirit of confusion um and the spirit of delay so yes there are a lot of different demonic spirits out there you know spirit of fear um spirit of poverty there's a lot of different spirits out there but the ones that are really 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 manifesting and coming forth are those specific spirits uh per se um spirit of lust the spirit of um delay the spirit of confusion um, in the spirit of control and the higher you go in the spirit realm the higher uh those those um you know those principalities are right so i just wanted to read some scripture just to help you to combat these things if you're dealing with these things because the demonic realm it is real you know demons are real um warfare is real spiritual warfare is real and we cannot live this christian life and believe that it's not because if you do then that's where your growth is already stunted okay um you can't get to that next level with god in your life with healing deliverance if you don't open your eyes to the spirit realm and to the enemy and to you know just the things that are happening in the spirit realm and we know all power goes to jesus all power goes to god but these things are real demons are written throughout you know the scriptures evilness written throughout the bible throughout the scriptures deliverance right the gospels especially jesus performing his miracles and you know casting out demons these things are real and we can't say we believe in the bible if we choose to pick and 
you know, pick and choose the pieces that we want to take with us. No, we have to honor the word. God is the word, right? The word does not change. So I want to keep that in mind. If you want true deliverance, you can fast, you can pray, you can repent. But if you truly do not believe that we have an adversary who's after your bloodline, who's after your mental, right? Um, it's not about, you know, the clothes you wear. It's not about anything else but your mental because he wants to stop your purpose from going forth, from being birthed, the book, the ministry, whatever it is. If you don't believe that the adversary is real and truly lurking and that generational curses, um, you know, don't exist and that, you know, um, uh, believers can't be oppressed, right, by demons and things like that, then you're going to be in trouble. So you have to really look at the fruit, look at what's on the table before you. Um, you don't have to believe me and those of us who choose to speak out against the demonic realm, especially prophetic voices, um, but just look at your life. Look at your life. Where I am, based on where I was eight months ago, this wouldn't be if I didn't understand the process and the power of deliverance and healing and you know truly repenting and allowing God to break off uh, bloodline curses and things of that nature so there's fruit in my life so for those of you who you know choose not to believe and you have something to say there's fruit in my life I don't have to work anymore God has blessed me I went from being you know just broke busted and disgusted with two children um, out on my own. Yes, I was serving. Yes, I was doing my best to make things happen. But because I chose to serve God and because I chose to do things God's way, not my way, not man's way, I'm in a position where my life is completely different. I'm living in a completely different city. I never have to work again. I have an amazing husband who loves me. I have an amazing ministry that God has trusted me with. I'm not bragging. I'm only boasting in Jesus. And that's only through the power of deliverance and prayer and um healing so you've got to you've got to believe it if you truly want change it starts with your belief system that the enemy is real and that he is out there with his minions and that bloodline curses do exist and that's why we have so many broken we have so much brokenness in the pulpit that's why we have so much filth in the pulpit because people are in leadership who are not healed people are in leadership who got so many issues and no we're not perfect i'm not perfect but i know what's there Come on now. That's what God is saying. Nobody's perfect. We're all born with certain things. We didn't ask to be brought here. We didn't ask to, to be, you know, born into the family we were born into. We didn't ask to be, you know, uh, birthed in the city, the country we were born into. Um, that's just, we're just a product of, 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 you know, our environment and where we came from. But God can renew your mind. God can change you. He can renew your heart. But you have to first be open to it. Confess and accept uh, Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Start there. But then begin to live a life of repentance and go through that process of sanctification where God can begin to renew your mind. But you have to believe it. You have to believe that this stuff is real. All right. Um, and again, that's why there's filth in the pulpit. Okay, for me, I never desired to be a pastor. I know there was a prophetic call on my life. I have heard God speak since I was a child. Okay, um, I never desired to be a pastor. I never desired to be a minister. None of it. Okay, um, God revealed it to me as I, you know, grew up and got older that I would be in ministry once I hit 30. I'm 36 now. I'll be 37 April 12th of this year. But because of the filth in the pulpit, because of what's happening in the pulpit, because of the lack of men in church, um, God has to do something different. He has to raise up women, put us in unnatural positions and unnatural circumstances. All right. Um, and then he's got to call on us who are already laboring to do multiple things, to do multiple jobs. If you are called as a prophet or a prophetess, God is calling on some of us to step into the role of pastor. So I've got to move interchangeably in between um, the offices. And sometimes it's exhausting. And I'm not on here complaining. I just want to be transparent with you guys because you guys are, you know, my my subscribers and God has led you to this ministry and I'm just being transparent. I am exhausted. There are many of us who are being stretched thin in the body of Christ because of the filth in the pulpit. And I've got people coming to me who don't know Peter from Paul. I've got people coming to me who don't read their books, who don't read the, you know, the scriptures. I got people coming to me who are so broken up and beaten up and I have to take on um, that 
soul care. This ministry, we deal with complete and total restoration. And God gives me the supernatural strength. And I'm not complaining because I'm grateful because God has chosen me. But sometimes it's tiresome. Because I have a family. I got family. I have a husband. I have a life. But ministry eats up so much of my time. All of us who choose to labor. And we don't see the dollars. We don't see, you know, our names being called. And not that we care, but we're not getting anything from this. And there was a, earlier a gentleman who was a subscriber who just kind of went off in the comments oh i'm tired of you oh you know shut up shut up just but that's how you know you're elevating my god for those of you where god has elevated you or if you want to know um when god's about to elevate you somebody the enemy will use somebody and that person could have been having a bad day a bad morning just a, a rough season maybe they're sick whatever it is the enemy will always use somebody who was easy easy to manipulate to try to attack what god is doing and so i just removed the person but they just he just popped off out of nowhere right so the activity is on high it's on a level i have not experienced before and so if you guys can keep me in your prayers and keep this ministry in your prayers that would be great um i know as of lately um i have not had the level of fire that I normally would have in my videos and um I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm I listen hey I get sick like everybody else I have children I have responsibilities like everybody else and if I'm on here giving you a word whether I give it to you a fire or just in a, a, a calm voice take it and do what God is asking you to do with it don't worry about the fire I'm bringing the level of energy I'm bringing and that's what y'all do some of y'all y'all go to church I want the pastor to fall out on the ground from preaching so hard to you when all you need is the word I remember last summer when I went to a conference, a leadership conference, there was um, a semi-retired pastor, probably close to her 70s. When she got up to deliver the word, when I say she didn't have to stop, jump, kick, roll on the floor, you know, uh, cry, whine, yell, she delivered that word. And because of her power in the spirit realm, because of her, um, just her anointing, she was able to break some things even in myself that day so be careful of what your the expectations you're putting on leaders okay when you get a word don't look at oh it, ooh, how how rough is she gonna be how you know in the vein is she gonna be is she gonna be on fire is he gonna be on fire no you're missing the point come and get what you gotta get and take it so god can change your life all right so um i just wanted to get on just to share with you these spirits that you have to watch out for that are out there lurking and when i tell you god allows us us prophetic voices us in that you know that prophetic office to experience things so that we can come back and warn you guys and when i say these spirits have attacked me where thoughts come in where i'm like these are not my thoughts you know this what's going on why do i feel like this what's going on god said listen this is what's happening and a lot of people especially in leadership are falling and giving in to these spirits giving in to these lustful spirits out here starting to sleep with the same sex because it's all lust it's perversion it's a spirit so you have to be careful when you feel yourself starting to feel certain things or maybe things become alluring to you or maybe you know you you hear thoughts and you know things begin to feel funny you have to check that thing at the door go to the bible go to the word seek god and say god what's going on why am i feeling this why am i being attacked with this and the holy spirit will let you know as a believer you have the power you have an advocate the holy spirit right you have an advocate jesus come on now who will help you and give you the information that you need don't just take it don't just give in to what these high-ranking seducing spirits are trying to do because they're out there manipulating the masses they're out there manipulating the pulpit that's why we have filth in the pulpit that's why god is going through and clean sweeping the pulpit because he's tired he's tired of the world being inside of the pulpit he's tired of the perversion being inside of the pulpit he's tired of the lies the greed the deceit come on now and nobody is perfect and we pray for our brothers and sisters who are in the pulpit who are lost who have fallen victim to the schemes of the enemy money gluttony lust uh fame we pray for them we pray for them we continue to love them but we pray for them to turn around in jesus name 
So just some scriptures I want to read to you before I go. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6 uh, and 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, hallelujah, hallelujah, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. My God. James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4 and 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Right? Luke 1, verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. Luke 10 and 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Thank you, God, for some of the scriptures that we have read today. So I pray that this video was helpful to somebody. Okay, be careful. Be careful out there. Remember, this is a spiritual battle. Remember that the enemy, all he wants to do is to attack you, to abort your purpose, your assignment, your mission, your ministry, your business. And you have to stand on business. You have to be about your father's business. And you have to remember to pray against these spirits. But first, you have to believe that this stuff is real you have to believe that spiritual warfare does exist you have to believe that there are you know bloodline curses and things in the bloodline and you can't deal with the occult and that open doors can let the enemy in deliverance is real you have to seek deliverance you have to believe in this stuff because the minute you do god can open your eyes so god wants to open your eyes today for somebody god wants to open your eyes put it in the chat box god open my eyes hallelujah open my eyes jesus help Help me to see the things that I have not been able to see in my life, in this Christian walk. Open my eyes, God, and he will begin to pull back the veil, pull back the layers, and you will be able to see things you've never seen before. And for those of you who are advancing in the spirit, in leadership, and even just as a believer, you're going to notice an increase in warfare. And the higher you go, the higher these seducing spirits are in the rank because there's a spiritual rank and an a, a angelic rank and a demonic rank. All right. And the higher you go, the higher it is. And the principalities of darkness, they're there and they're waiting. But we know that we have Jesus as the ultimate defeater. So this is not to boast about the enemy, but to be open and to be, you know, just pivy to his schemes. Because he is constantly scheming. He is constantly going out there roaring, right? Roaming like a lion trying to devour. And it's up to us to put on the full armor of God and to defeat him with the power of the cross, with the power of Jesus and the tools that God gives us for deliverance, right? And for victory in Jesus name. So if you feel led to give, please do so. God loves and honors a cheerful giver. Um, if you have not accepted Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent. I confess my sins. God, I believe you died on that cross for me. Please come into my life. He will come into your life and he will begin to move. Being a Christian is the best thing ever. Being a follower of Jesus is the best thing ever. So I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed weekend. Remember, I have office hours now. Friday from 9 a.m. Um, uh, CST to to 12 p.m. CST and then I have office hours on Saturday at 6 p.m. CST to 7 p.m. CST. All right. I love you guys. Have a blessed day and we'll talk soon.